Hello and welcome to another brief video review from Inkdependence.com. Uh, today I'm coming to you from my backyard, which is uh, in the midst of a real nice sunny day here in the uh, middle of North Carolina. I'll refocus the camera here a bit. Uh, this is my backyard. I'm only just starting landscaping. We moved in about a year ago, but I started making gardens. All these old gardens are mine. Uh, bird feeders, plant on the table, uh, <laughs> fence, and a dog around here somewhere. Hmm. Well, yeah, she's around. Oh, there she is. There's Scraggles the dog. Scraggles! There you go. Alright. Now back to the ink. This is one of the limited edition Mont Blanc inks. Comes in one of these little boxes, as they all do. Uh, and here's the bottle. The bottles for these are generally kind of different. Uh, different to each other, and especially different to the regular Mont Blanc, uh, Mont Blanc uh, bottles. I always write it as two words, because that's how I'm used to seeing it, you know, with this logo. Uh, but it is, I think, one word, so I don't know, disregard my uh, big break there. But uh, nonetheless, it's a small bottle, it's 35 mils, uh, and these do come in at about 18 bucks a piece. They ain't cheap, uh, but they are limited edition, and in my experience, they're all quite good. Uh, ooh, it's very breezy. I've got this big umbrella above me that's kind of uh, swaying in the breeze. Hopefully it doesn't take off. All right, uh, let's talk about this ink before everything blows away. Uh, this is my least favorite of the limited editions, uh, just because I'm not a huge fan of the color and I think it's a little bit dry uh, in terms of texture, uh, at least on the nib. I tried this in my Lamy All-Star uh, 1.1 uh, stub nib. Uh, I've had it in other pens as well, but I've never really liked it that much. I just keep trying it out in different things. Uh, it just seems a bit dry to me, but it doesn't bleed feather or spread, so it behaves well just like the rest of them. Uh, I do uh, like the shading. It's not a very saturated ink, so it shades all over the place. Uh, but the problem is that it shades this kind of, um, well, this is actually pretty accurate, I suppose, uh, this color right here, which is kind of a, I don't know, gross, seaweedy sort of green. So they got the color dead on. It's just not a color that I find particularly pleasant. Uh, here it is compared to a bunch of other things, including uh, the uh, Platinum Mix-Free Leaf Green that I've reviewed recently as well. You can see that's much more of a bright green. Seaweed is much more of a dark green, uh, sort of a, you know, kind of a muddy green. Like, I don't know, think of like a sort of dark kelp forest or something maybe. Oh, blown away. All right, uh, so let's get to the water test. Uh, we'll see if the water just blows away on the page as well. Let's see what can I weight it down with? Oh, weight it down with this here camera. All right. All right. So let's see. Put a little water on the page. There we go. Uh, I don't actually have any idea what this is going to do with water. It is a seaweed, so maybe it'll stick around. Or maybe it'll just drift away on the waves. All right. So here we go. Um. Yeah, a bit of a mixed bag. It's here on the edge. That's it right there. Not very much came up, uh, but it's not very saturated ink, so maybe a lot of it came up. Oh, there's a little water there on the drip. Yeah, it seems okay. And now that I've got a bit of a wet corner and smeared across, it doesn't really smear, so that's good. Uh, it does look like some of it sticks around, but not much. It's noticeably lighter. Danger from the umbrella above. Let's go wrap this sucker up. Uh, this is uh, Jonathan Swift's Seaweed Green. Uh, this is a, I sort of hesitate to recommend, but if you want to have the whole set of Mont Blanc inks, uh, this is an okay one. If you like that green, go for it. It behaves perfectly well, except it's a little bit dry. So put it in your wet nibs uh, and enjoy that weirdo seaweedy goodness. All right, Independence out.